When these pieces of hard plastic and bulletproof fabric are molded and stitched together, they'll make a suit of armor that's tailor-made for the most dangerous job in the world. For the bomb disposal specialist, going to work means putting his life on the line. During the blitz of World War II, the first modern EOD, or Explosive Ordnance Disposal, was established to deal with unexploded German bombs that landed and lodged in London streets. The first operatives worked unprotected, and detonation meant certain death. It wasn't until the 1980s, when British bomb squads were handling IRA explosives, that the protective suit was developed. In combat zones like Afghanistan, where soldiers are more likely to be killed by an IED than by gunfire, bomb disposal specialists are in high demand and at high risk. When a patrol spots something suspicious, the bomb squad is dispatched to investigate, and one operator will suit up and head out alone on what has been referred to as the long walk. The bomb suit is made up of the helmet, the outer shell, the soft armor, and the hard armor. The hard armor is made from a stack of multiple sheets of polyethylene that are placed in a press. Heat, steam, and 1,000 tons of pressure fuse the sheets into a shield that's 10 times stronger than steel and made from the same tightly woven fibers that protect armored cars. Then, the shield is cut into three curved plates for each of the body's vital areas. The chest, groin, and the throat. The shield deflects the bomb's high-impact shock waves. Shrapnel has a tough time penetrating the armor. During a tour of duty in Afghanistan, Staff Sergeant Carl Badger Lee's steady hands and cool head have racked up the record for dismantling twice as many IEDs as anybody else. He's defused 139 bombs, 42 of them in one village alone. In 2010, Badger was awarded a medal for his acts of bravery by Prince Charles. He also saved thousands of lives. While the hard armor protects against a worst case scenario, when you're picking up bombs, you still have to be able to move. So the bulk of the bomb suit is made from flexible soft armor that bends and stretches with the wearer. Sheets of bulletproof synthetic material called aramid are rolled onto the cutting table. Patterned stencils are laid over the material, traced and cut. When a bullet or shrapnel connects, the fabric softens the blow by catching it in the tight-knit weave, like a spider web, and spreading the impact across the material. The bomb suit helmet starts as rectangular pieces of ballistic material, which are forced into a rounded steel mold. A heat-resistant balloon is dropped into the mold and connected to an air supply. The balloon is inflated, and the mold is placed in a kiln. The pressure and heat of the kiln shape the helmet. Once the shell is baked, the balloon is deflated and removed. The helmet is cut into shape with a handsaw. The surface is sprayed and baked to a hard glaze. The hard and soft armor are stuffed into the outer shell, and the helmet is fitted with accessories like lights, a communication system, and a protective visor. After 40 hours of careful craftsmanship, this bomb suit is complete and ready to be tested. Even though a sample from each batch is put through rigorous testing, Wearing a bomb suit does not guarantee you won't get hurt. 
But if you dismantle bombs for a living, you want your work clothes to give you a fighting chance and make the most dangerous job in the world a little less dangerous.